Audhu billahi min ash-shaitan na'in rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Dear viewers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Ethics of Life where we try and discuss morals ethics and matters of akhlaq to help us on our journey to reach full human potentials Today inshallah we will be discussing the matter of truthfulness and honesty This is of course a topic which concerns all of us in our day-to-day -day lives and a necessary criteria to become a believing Muslim. As we know in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 70, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, be aware of telling the truth. And Allah tells us that we must always speak the truth. But what does it mean to be honest? Do we always have to verbally speak the truth? Or should we be honest to ourselves and to our surroundings as well? Inshallah, joining me today is none other than the respected Hujjat al-Islam, Dr. Sheikh Muhammad Ali Shamali. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Alaikum assalam. Thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. It's an honor to have you here. Sheikhna, just to kind of introduce the discussion and, and begin on this subject, um, we know, of course, that having the characteristic of truthfulness is a critical point in being a, a believing Muslim. How important is truthfulness um, in Islam? Thank you very much. Uh, I also express my greetings to our dear viewers. Bismillah rahman rahim I have been reflecting and studying and uh, discussing the topic of truthfulness in Islamic ethics for some years. And I can share with you my conclusion. This is to the best of my understanding. Truthfulness is one of the most fundamental issues in Islamic ethics and actually I personally believe it's the most fundamental virtue. Okay. I have discussed this in a series called Indicators of Piety. Yeah and also in Akhlaq series in the Hose in few sessions, that why I think truthfulness or sadq is the most fundamental. Yeah. So this is after careful examination of the topic. But first, let me, let me say what we mean by truthfulness, <coughs> and then we will see why it is so important. Because sometimes when we say truthfulness, people think of telling the truth. Yeah. But telling the truth is a small part of truthfulness. Truthfulness is more. So, for example, in our hadith, if you study our hadith, we have said all hadith. Yeah, which is very important. A believer should not tell lies. Yeah, should tell the truth. Maybe sometimes. We are not supposed to tell the truth because, for example, it's going to endanger someone's life. Maybe we need to prepare that person. Yeah. yeah? yeah. For example, <coughs> if uh, someone's child has just been killed in an accident, mm. yeah, maybe you don't tell the truth immediately. Okay. You ask someone else, for example, to tell. You don't say the truth. Okay. You say ask someone or you prepare that person little by little talking about, for example, you know, we have to be prepared, you know, the children are, you know, trust of God, you know, things like this. Or maybe you decide not to say anything till, for example, someone that is able to come forth comes. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not saying that we should tell all the truth that we know. Some might be confidential for different reasons, okay. but we should be committed to telling the truth as much as possible and don't tell lies, okay? But <coughs> truthfulness is more than this. In the Quran, we have people that are described as sadiq. For example, اتَّقُوا wa kunu مَعَ sadiqin. Be pious. This is your taqwa, piety, but be also with the people who are sadiq. Mm. It's not just enough that you are personally trying to be pious. You need to be 
in company of Sadiqin. Sadiq means truthful. Also in Quran we have Siddiq. Yes. The one who is most truthful. Wadhkur fil kitab Ibrahim. Mentioned in the book Ibrahim. What was the quality of Ibrahim? Innahu kana Siddiqan Nabiya. Ibrahim was Siddiq. Or Yusuf alayhi salam was Siddiq. Ayyuha Siddiq aftana. You know, when people ask for the interpretation of the dream. Hmm. Or Lady Maryam, wa ummuhu Siddiqah. Mother of Jesus was Siddiqah, most truthful. Or we say Lady Fatima to Zahra according to Hadith. She is Siddiqah. So Siddiq is the one whose words, whose deeds, whose intentions, whose thoughts, all are in full compliance with truth. So, if you look at the Quran, you find al-haq, the truth or the true, because you can translate it in both ways. Yeah. The truth or the true is the most fundamental thing. Once I had a class uh, on moral philosophy and I was talking about significance of truth. And one of the students who was himself a young scholar, this is a PhD <coughs> program in Qom. Yes. He told me, uh, maybe you are overemphasizing on truth. Because, you know, in our academic circles, we are very free and we love to be, you know, asking and challenging and this type of things. I very much liked this class. Then I told him, what about this verse in the Quran? I want all our viewers to reflect on this verse carefully. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to say, what's the difference between him and idols? Why we should worship God and not idols? Quran says, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ الْبَاطِلِ This is because God is Al-Haqq. Mm. God is the, the truth. truth. Yes. And everything that they call and worship other than God is batil, is false. Mm. Okay? So even God is telling us, you should worship me and serve me. Yeah. Why? Not because of, for example, you know, there is something, you know, that I want for myself or... Yeah. No, because you are supposed to serve the truth. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ Haq. Hmm. So, a person who is truthful means he or she dedicates his life or her life to first looking for the truth, discovering the truth, examining the truth, accepting the truth, following the truth, and then being a witness yes. for other people that by listening to him or watching him, they can also find a way towards truth. So everything at the service of truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have created the skies and the earth bil haqq. Or for example, he says, we send the prophet bil haqq. We send Quran down bil haqq. Mm. You receive the revelation bil haqq. Bil haqq anzalnahu wa bil haqq nazal. So, Everything is either al-haq or bil-haq. Yeah, yeah. Everything which is coming from God is either al-haq, which is he himself, or it's with observing haq. So yeah. who is truthful? The one that is not happy unless he finds out the truth and commits himself to the truth and lives by the truth and tries to facilitate for other people their journey towards the truth. Anything other than truth is illusion. Okay. 
Bottle is illusion. Quran says very beautifully, the example of truth and falsehood is like the example of bubbles and water. Oh, I see. When rain comes and you have flood, water is mixing with, you know, air and creating bubbles on the surface. Yes. When you look at the water, you only see bubbles. But the Quran says, these bubbles will disappear. When the flood reaches a plain and is stopped, then the bubbles disappear. disappear. Okay? But what remains is water. Yes. But what benefits people would remain on the earth. So, oh, I see, yeah. falsehood is not real. Falsehood is like just bubbles. It's void. It's empty. And this is why Quran says, الحق وزهق الباطل إن الباطل كان زهوقا. The truth came or the true came and the false went. Yeah. And the Quran says, false is something that cannot remain. So when we say truthfulness, it's with a deep understanding of what is haqq and what position haqq has in the entire world and how we should move towards haqq. Yes. So for us, this is not something secondary. It's the core of Iman. It's the core of taqwa. And this is why our hadith say, that if you want to examine someone, see how truthful they are, how trustworthy they are. Yes. Or we have hadith that a believer, a mu'min, may make some mistakes or sins, God forbids, but never tells lies. Oh, I see. It's so vicious. Because it shows that there is no respect for the haqq. So this is what I wanted to share just at the beginning. There are much more to say, but I just want that all of us understand we are not dealing with something secondary. We are dealing with something which is absolutely important in yes. Islamic ethics. It's the core of the faith. It's the core. Sheikh, when we analyze why people lie, um, one could perhaps argue that if, if I was to lie, I may lie because I fear others more than I fear Allah. Mm -hmm. And I fear that the, the, the reputation others will have of me is worse for me than what Allah will think of me. Similarly, some may say as well that for someone to lie, they may put more trust in someone else as opposed to trust in Allah. As an example, someone may lie um, to earn haram money and to earn an income in a haram means yes. as opposed to telling the truth and leaving it to Allah and be giving, given a, a, a risk which is from God. Do you agree with this analysis? Is it a fair understanding as to why people lie, um, that there may be insecurities inside? Uh, maybe there are more than one reason. One reason is that, yes, they don't feel secure. And unfortunately, by making something which is not helping them, they try to secure themselves. Yeah. Or sometimes maybe they are greedy. Mm. It's not that they are worried about telling the truth, but they are greedy. They want to, for example, cheat to gain more. Yeah. Yeah. For example, this person is rich. Okay. But by telling lies to the customer, tries to make more money. More money. It's I not see. that if he doesn't tell lies, you know, he will have a problem, yeah. but he yeah. wants to gain more. Or sometimes, you know, people are not careful. Actually, many times people don't tell the truth because they don't bother about the truth. Okay. You know, for example, they have read something some years back or heard something in a lecture and just whatever is in their mind, they say it. Even they don't think to put it together yeah. and to recall the idea. Just say whatever comes to the mind. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is very important that when you want to say something, 
you know that you are going to be answerable. Why you said this? So even if an ordinary person tells you something, you are to be ready to answer why you reported first and why you reported in this way. Okay. Let alone if we are conveying the word of God yes. or religion or, for example, some fiqhi <laughs> rulings, we have to be very careful. You know, in the months of Ramadan, they give us a training. Yeah. You know, one of the things that make fasting void is to attribute something to God, which is not true. Yes. Yeah. For example, if uh, someone says this is uh, an ayah in the Quran, which is not, then his fast becomes void. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. It's, so what is important is that all the year we have to remember whatever we say must be said with carefulness because we are accountable. Okay. Okay. Or for example, people hear rumors. They have not created the rumor and sometimes maybe even they are not happy, <laughs> but sometimes unhappily we oh, spread the rumors and we serve the one who created this rumor. You know, for example, I am sad. I say to you, have you heard this rumor? Yeah. And you say, no, then I tell you the rumor. So actually I have spread it more. Yeah. You know, so people may tell lies either because they fabricate lies out of fear or out of some, you know, uh, temptation yeah. or greed. People sometimes tell lies because they are not careful. Yes. You know, we have a beautiful hadith. Kafa bil mar and Or yeah. maybe it's a, you know, proverb or, you know, wise saying. It's sufficient for being a liar to say whatever you hear. I see. Because many things that you hear may not be based on evidence, evidence yeah. and on documents. Or sometimes, you know, there are rumors. So, we have to be very cautious when we speak or write. Because whatever <laughs> words we say or utter or write yeah. would be counted. It's interesting you mentioned that, Sheikh. Um, I wanted to ask if there are any instances where lying is permissible or bending the truth, for example, to bring two brothers together or in instances of taqiyya, life or death. Um, and there's another kind of analogy which I wanted to allude to. Um, there's a, a story, I believe, of one of the holy imams, um, where a man came to the masjid where the imam was staying and said, oh, imam, I'm being chased by these dangerous men. Can you hide me? And the Imam said, okay, go over here, hide in this corner. Um, and then the Imam himself stood up and moved somewhere else, sat down. And these dangerous men came and they said to the Imam, have you seen this man? Because they obviously believed that the Holy Imam would tell the truth. And the Imam said, while I have been sitting here, I have not seen him. Now, of course, you know, subconsciously he knew where the man was um, and he insinuated, I haven't seen him, although knowing the actual truth. So, for example, in this instance or in other cases, are we allowed to lie? I don't know if lie is the right word, but mm. bend the truth perhaps? Yeah. So, first of all, we should understand how important it is to tell the truth. Okay. Then, if something extraordinary happens, whose significance would overweigh the truth involved. Okay. These are very technical things. So if something extraordinary happens, whose significance overweighs and overrides the truth which is involved, then we might be allowed not to tell the truth, mm. or even if needed, to do tawriyah. What is Toria? Toria is to say something which can be understood in two different ways. I see, okay. The way it is normally understood is safe. The way that 
can be understood and you mean it or you don't mean it can be not safe. I see. So you mean something and the listener understands something else. I see. Okay. But you didn't tell a lie. Yeah. Just you meant something other than what they understood. This is called tawriya, like the example that someone asked Imam Ali alayhi salam, have you seen so and so? And that person was an innocent person whose life was in danger. So Imam said, as long as I have been here, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him. So here mm -hmm. can mean this location or here can mean this environment. Yes. yes. They thought Imam is, you know, in the whole environment, he has yeah. not seen him and he has not. A, but Imam is in this step, in this point. Yes. So this is called Tawriya. This is not lie. Of course, many fuqaha say that even Tawriya, as much as possible, should be avoided. Is it misleading? It, because it can be misleading. Yeah. Even if, for example, some may say technically it's not counted as a lie, but still it's misguiding and misleading. So we yes. have to be careful. But what I'm saying is that even in such cases, as much as possible, we don't want to get involved in telling lie. Okay. Again, we want to tell the truth. Yes. But a truth which <coughs> might not be understood in the way that that person, you know, is normally understanding the phrase. Yeah. So, if a jurist, a faqih, a marja, who knows significance of truth, who knows significance of reconciliation, who knows significance of saving life of people, yeah. if he finds out after careful consideration, that there is something which is more important than telling the truth, yeah. then he may give permission I see. that in this case, you can first stop telling the truth. If it's not working, do Tawriya. To if it's not working, even you may be needed to say the lie, but for saving a greater interest for people. Okay, I see. So, so it's very, very clearly defined. It's not that everyone for, you know, taking, you know, money or, you know, bribing or, you know, uh, or getting a position can say uh, there was interest in this. There was, you know, maslaha. No, no. It has to be something which a jurist, an expert would say, we can be 100% sure that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is more important than that. For example, one case that many jurists say is Islahu Dhat al okay. Reconciliation. Suppose husband and wife don't get aligned with each other and they are going to divorce. You try to help as much as possible, but it's not working. The only way that is proved that it can work, there's no other way, is to tell lie. Yes. For example, you say to the wife that I heard your husband you know, loves you a lot. Mm. And <laughs> you know, say things like this. Or you say to the husband, you know, your wife is, you know, has said this about you, you know, she is very, you know, uh, much uh, caring about you and this type of things. Yeah. So this is to reconcile. There's a greater purpose. And yeah. Faqih says, you are not gaining anything here. You don't have any selfish interest here. You are actually sacrificing your time, your energy, even, you know, you hate saying lie, but, you know, you just want to say this so that two people can live together. Mm. This is totally different from a person who wants to gain something and tell lies. I see, okay. And this is why I say, there's a very important point we discuss in moral philosophy. You may face circumstances, extraordinary circumstances in which you tell lies. Okay? Of course, it has to be clearly defined in fiqh. Yeah. Maybe there are extraordinary, but 
you never enjoy. You are a truthful person in soul and heart, yeah. but as an action, maybe you need to tell a lie. Like, for mm -hmm. example, a person who is muttaqi, yes. but maybe now is starving to death. Yes. And the only thing to eat is a meat which is not halal. Okay. Either you eat or you die. We say acclimate. Acclimate in emergency is a lot. Yes. To the, of course, minimum, yeah? So, in الضرورات تبيح المحظورات It's a rule we have in fiqh. Okay? Yeah. Just to save your life. But you are muttaqi. You never do this. Even now that you are eating this meat, you are not enjoying. Mm. You just want to save your life because you know that Allah wants your life to be saved. Mm. Okay? And this is now halal because it's emergency. But to the minimum. You don't say, okay, alhamdulillah, now there is emergency and I can eat this, so let me do a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. You hate, you dislike, you don't want to eat, you don't want to even touch it. But just, to save you life. want to save it. Mm. So, if a mu'min ever tells a lie after jurists saying that this is one of the cases in which telling a lie is allowed, it should be like aklul meita. I see, I see. Um, Sheikh, we know living in the 21st century Western society with secularism and sensationalism, we are surrounded by fake news and mm. alternate facts and, and media and different forms of media, different um, political parties and circles within the political spectrum push out a certain agenda. Many a time in the societies we live in, even though we can't help it, we are given or fed an agenda or propaganda and we become accustomed to this. It may not just be within the media, it may be, for example, with uh, opinions about people or opinions about um, a political, uh, political subject or any other specific subject. How can we ensure that we ourselves do not become swayed by these opinions, that we remain objective, that when we speak about a certain subject that we are not telling uh, saying statements based on an agenda and what mm. we've been told. How can we judge something when we hear something? Very good. It's very important. In order to be able to observe the truth, you need to be rational. Okay. If you are rational and are not driven by emotions or sensations or temptations or persuasions, and you are just following the rules of logic, mm. then you know that you must observe few things. First, don't spread, don't share, don't communicate, don't retweet, don't forward, don't mm. like on Facebook, anything for which you have no rational backup. Okay, okay. Take every action seriously. We are human beings and human beings are rational animals. <laughs> it means that what makes us different from animals is our rationality. Yeah. If that rationality is taken away, we are not that much different. Actually, yeah. we are worse than them because they cannot be rational, but we are supposed to be rational. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, anything a rational person does has a purpose. A rational person never does something in vain or never does something and later, you know, thinks about it. You know, mm. unfortunately, sometimes we are pressed or we are impatient. Either people pressurize us or we are impatient and we rush without considering why I am doing this okay. and how I am doing this. But a rational person always considers why I am doing this, and if I'm supposed to do this, how I should do it. Mm. It's not just one, two things. So, anything that you know, you have no evidence for it. 
anything yet that you cannot justify it rationally, anything that you cannot justify to other people who are rational, you should not follow it and you should not do it, you should not spread it. Okay. So we should always be critical what we hear, what we say as well. Exactly. Even on social media. Yes. And not to do something because you are not sure. Okay. It's better than doing mistakes. Yeah. Because sometimes we say, maybe I have to do something. Maybe I have to tell this. But if you are not sure it is true and it is wise, don't do it. Because to fail to do something beneficial is better than doing something bad by yeah. mistake. I see. So if you have to choose between the two, to gain a potential benefit, but at the same time risking, yeah. or to be cautious not to take the benefit, but protect yourself. Which one is better? To protect. Because mm. protection is more important than gaining. I see. Okay? So, everything should be driven by wisdom, okay. by rationality, by controlling our emotions, by taking time, enough time, to examine and make a decision. Never rush and never lose opportunities. To find the balance is wisdom. Sheikh, just as... Uh a final question. Yes. Can you perhaps elaborate on the on the link between um, truthfulness and honesty and the fitra? Mm -hmm. Is it something which is innate really. within us or? Very beautiful. Actually, Allah has made in our fitra in the way that we are created, in our fabric, Allah has made us interested in truth. Okay. Why human beings have curiosity? Curiosity is like hunger for food. I see. It's like thirst for water. Curiosity mm -hmm. is our interest in truth. Without finding the truth, that thirst or hunger is not over. Mm. So we have an internal push towards haqq. And when you have haq, you are comfortable. When you deny haq, or you tell lie, you are not comfortable. You know these machines that they have for dictate, you know, detectors. detecting the lying? Yeah, yeah. Why it works? Because when people tell lies, it's against their Unnatural. fitrah. Yes, yeah. Even if they are liars, <laughs> but in their fitrah, they feel it's odd. They yeah. feel it's not acceptable. Therefore, they can detect. I see. Of course, if na'uzu billah, God forbids, if someone, you know, has become a professional liar, then maybe they lose their sensitivity and they never feel bad. This is yeah. happening. You know, sometimes people, yeah. first, they understand bad and they feel very bad if they do something wrong. But little by little, if they insist and keep in doing bad things, sensitivity, sensitivity towards bad goes down, down. A time may come that people become very, you know, like cool blood. I see. They do bad things and they don't feel anything. And na'uzu billah, if they keep going, even if they don't do bad, they feel bad. Mm. Like people who are, you know, murderers. The first murder is very terrible for them. But if they keep killing people, then it will become ordinary. And na'uzu billah, if people become like, you know, Pharaoh or Hitler or Saddam, then even if a day comes that they have not killed people, they don't feel it's a good, you know, like you become like a hunter. Yeah. Hunter of people. <laughs> so, fitra is pushing us towards haqq mm. and making us comfortable when we are observing haqq. Mm. Therefore, it's very important to keep this. You see children, how honest they are? Yeah? Yeah. They're very honest. But unfortunately, from environment or society, they may le learn lying. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sometimes a young <laughs> child, for example, says, uh, you know, if someone knocks the door, you know, is your father in? He says, my father is in, but he told me that he's not, didn't tell you he's not <laughs> here. Because child is honest. He doesn't know, yeah. It's a big crime that if parents, society, environment, make children lose that fitri mm. attachment to truth and disassociation from falsehood. Yes. We have to let them remain with their fitra. Every person by fitra loves truth and feels comfortable when he is with the truth. Inshallah, we can work towards the community inshallah, Allah which Allah is truthful us. and inshallah serving the community and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Muhammad al thank you so much. Thank you, my pleasure.